Nancy was married to Nontlantla, the daughter of my brother, who Professor Mzidigazi Kakuma. So Bongani is our Mkwenya. Ever since Kenya, Bongani loved the Kumalos. And in spite of his numerous trips abroad, he made time to be with us. A simple looking man he was, one who carried himself with ease and grace in the company of the high and mighty, as well as with ordinary folks. He was a man who preferred wearing his blazer and kept to the same hairstyle for as long as I have known him which is almost three decades. <laughs> I first met him in the late 1980s, the year he and Nontlanka completed their university studies at Wentworth University in Durban. This was at the height of the United Democratic Front reign. Being a vocal supporter of UDF, Bongani and I would often have heated political discussions. Him pushing the ANC ideology and me the black consciousness and the PAC line. We would argue passionately and later he'd relent out of respect for me as an elder of the, in the family. In retrospect, most of the time, neither of us was right. As far as I know, he was still a staunch ANC supporter to his dying days. He had a big heart and was very accommodating. I don't know if I should read the next paragraph. But I will read it on the promise that you won't laugh. Once spending some time in London, I decided to pay them a visit in Oxford, where he was studying. Now, for some inexplicable reason, I'm in Utleva, Unjengam. Instead of going to Oxford, I went to Cambridge. <laughs> I said, don't laugh. <laughs> I heard you. I arrived in Cambridge early in the evening and called them. When Nantada asked me to describe to where I was, she realized I was hopelessly lost. She told me to sit tight and wait for Bongani, who would come and get me. I told her not to worry, that I would book into a hotel and proceed to Oxford the following morning. Nantada said Bongani would not have any of that and that he was already on his way to pick me up. When he found me, he simply asked me if I needed a bite or something to drink. There was no mention or reference to my dumbness <laughs> as we drove in the middle of the night. As we drove in the middle of the night. Instead, he was the jovial Bongani I knew. He was engaging in political political discussion, we arrived in Oxford in the early hours of the morning. Bongani was at home in any company and would contribute wisely to whatever discussion held at the table. He was at ease in the city as well as in the township among Abotleva. He was equally comfortable in rural areas. I can attest to that because We've shared many a meal consisting of meat roasted on open fire on the floor at my family homestead, Kwasabisa, Kwazulunatal. His home was a sanctuary for many people, particularly young people, friends of his daughters, Nosipo, Vui, and Gugu, whom he dearly called Obaba when they were toddlers. Not so long ago, a few of these friends were spending time at the Mayosi home preparing for Vui's wedding. Naturally, their discussions veered to reminiscing about the past. The hilarious part of their conversation was to describe how Uncle Bongani would make fun of what they viewed as challenges. He used to laugh 
asked me when I told him I was struggling with meds, said Unomapo. His, relation, his relationship with his wife was something. Wanted to witness them together to understand the depth of their love and their admiration for each other. They loved each other without being lovey-dovey. One felt the love particularly when they were engaged in conversation or when non tantra would be describing something and Bongani conquering, yes, 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 yes. <laughs> These yeses would roll out fast and furious, accompanied by a smile displaying even whiter than white teeth. Unlike most young married couples who call each other babes or some such fashionable salutation, Nantanta called him Bongs and he simply called him Ntlantla. Highly educated as he was, Bongani was somehow rooted in his tradition. He would fondly refer to Nantanta as Mfaz. Yet most sophisticated people dislike that word, arguing it's uncouth. They prefer Nkosigas. Bongani would say, Dio and Lamfaz. <laughs> For every year that we've been married, we have gained two kilos. <laughs> Teasing Nantanta about the weight she has put on. Sadly, Bongani today is gone to meet his father, the dynamic and gifted gynecologist who died in 1993, and his aunt, Nontutu Muli, a woman who loved his brother's children unreservedly. She was their anchor during the university days in Deben. Bongani will meet his brother, Utabo, who lived life to the full and died in an accident. I can see Tabo welcome him wearing the Mayosi smile. I hear him asking him, as only Tabo could, what took you so long? Later, he will meet my mom, who will ask him, Ufuna Anila. I see him adjust his frame of his spectacles, smiles at my mom, reassures her that Nontlanta and the girls are safe and that he will always be with them, as well as with all the members of the Mayosi clan, the people who raised and shaped his life and that he will not forget the Kumalos, who loved him like their own son, that he will always watch over the UCT students who looked up to him for solutions, and the many doctors who he opened doors for, enabling them to specialize in various medical fields. And last but not least, there is his mother, Mama Duna, who is fondly referred to by all and sundry, Magogo. May she all forever feel her son's presence. Lala Mokol, Khadebe, Bungan, Giyabo. Thank you very much, uh, Abako Ziba Wafadebe. They were using the Abako Zi privilege. Uh, and generally, Abako Zi have got a bigger privilege than anybody else. And that is why you did not see me standing up. Uh, because without Abako Zi, Nge Angazange Abenam Faz as he used to fondly call Muntang. Thank you very much to Abakozi. Uh, uh, I'm sure when he was at St. John's, he was amongst those 
who used to be referred to uh, people who are afraid of girls, uh, translated in this course as a shuman. Um, but, but came the time when he was in Natal Medical School. The blingers that he wore when he was at St. John's, for some reason, were swept away by this beautiful queen, Yagwamdungwa. Ah, Kadebe. And he was swept off his feet. I think he smiles, I can imagine his smile. <laughs> um, thank you very much, Yagwamdungwa and Yagwamayos. Unengomaya, I think you that he laughed. And uh, the other day, he says to me, Hey, Fondi. Uh, meaning that I am now an in-law. That was the time when the eldest daughter uh, was spotted by a young man. I think because of his beautiful voice, uh, the daughter could not resist. They are going to help us with the song Gabab and render an item in honor of the father. Now, this is our palastopis, which means in English, we are going to run bleeding, but not literally. Um, it means we're going to move with a pace that is quicker than we've had. Now that the family has spoken, uh, we're going to talk about Uka Debe in his professional experience, in his professional field. And uh, these guys really knew each other way back from school, uh, Dr. Fundile Nyati will come and speak on behalf of those areas of experience and address us on what Khadebe knew. He represents a lot of us, uh, a lot of uh, you colleagues uh, from school and university. And uh, over to you, Bell.